Hey YouTube, it's Rob. Doing a little more uh, video brewing with my muck. So I'll keep the same. And I will uh, do some brewing after the match. So stay tuned for that. And I will also address some of the posts in the MTGS forum thread. So he's probably playing pod. I would guess. Come on, bud. So, take that. Maybe not. Maybe it's not a pot. Maybe hate bears or something. This is like the Thalia. Oh, called it. Yeah. So that's cool. Stupid thing has a first strike on it, though. Just remember that. I was thinking I would flash in my uh, Snapcaster to block, but... Pride Mage, okay. So if he swings with both, I will um, I'll flash in my Snapcaster and kill the Pride Mage. this case what I will do is vapor snag that thing at the end of his turn <clears throat> and then next turn I'll snap or I'll cryptic command it um, okay Guess I don't really understand that play. Just to get something untapped. <clears throat> All right. So I don't know. Uvenwald tracker. Okay, two cryptics, that's good.
Dahlia is a really good card. Assless collar. So I'll bounce him. Have to click. So if he makes them fight now, that's fine. It just kills them both. I don't think I've ever seen that card played before in Modern, that Uvenwald. It's kind of cool. Not going to lie. I like it. For 1cc. Makes me want to bust out my hate bears. Come on, bud. All right. Finally goes. All right, we'll see what happens here. It's the click. It's kind of okay, though. I can do stuff like um, Snapcaster, a Vapor Snag, and do some other little things that are kind of cool. Let's see what he does. I'll skip his draw. I won't use the click in his draw. didn't equip it, which is good. So we'll see what he's hanging on to. I know he's got that Uvenwald and <clears throat> some other things. A 
So he chooses to path to exile my click, which I'll dispel. Oh, he's got Cigar Day in there. Lead the Stampede is probably another one that I don't really want to see. Hmm. If I get another mana, I can Snapcaster the Cryptics. Lead, this, let's see, could he cast the Cigar to this turn? One, two, three, four, and it costs five, so he can't cast that this turn. No matter what. So I guess I'll I'll pitch the lead. Hopefully he doesn't get a land off of that. I forgot about that. Damn. Should have pitched a cigar to if he gets a land from when I if, if, from when I dumped the lead. It's going to annoy. No, he doesn't. He's casting the Uvenwald, Alvenwald tracker. And equips. Okay. Snap. So, click comes out. That little bugger is kind of annoying. Okay, I'm kind of okay with this, time me out. So I think this is the first time I've actually tabled this thing. No, no, <clears throat> there was one other time, but it's very rare. Okay, he didn't use it in response. I'm kind of surprised. 
I thought he would have used it to fight the Vendillion click. Seems like that would have been a trade in his advantage. That thing doesn't untap, so... Oh, Path to Exile coming in. Forgot about that part. That's kind of okay, though, because now, now I can Snapcaster my uh, Cryptic commands. I have three Snapcasters, too. He plays Ghost Quarter. See if I can get this thing to flip. Nope. Put that down. Alrighty. Just keep that thing tapped for now. Just put him on my 20 turn or 16 turn timer with uh, Delver that doesn't want to flip. It's okay. See, that's the thing though. Okay, yeah, I get it. I don't have a ton, uh, you know, I've got 18 cards that will make Delver flip. That's a third of the deck, but um, just because, you know, U White R Tempo has 20. Two or twenty-three doesn't mean I can't play it here as a low investment uh, finisher. That's all it is. It's just it's a low investment finisher. Whether I get a couple damage from it or it ends the whole game for me, I haven't committed much to it. You know, it's not a fantastic top deck. I'll grant you that. But you know, I've got Jace and other things in here that will. Uh, you know, they give me gas, and I can't wait for that Thassa. When that Thassa comes out, oh, Rage Quit. Okay. So, three out of four Rage Quits for my videos. Um, let's take a look at the deck. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple posts in the, um, in the deck creation section uh, of my thing here. Um... This guy, Bad Business, who has previously posted negative stuff on my other threads, uh, he kind of makes a couple good points here. And as you can see, I took some of it to heart. Like, he, he was um, recommending the repeal. <clears throat> he was re recommending it over the Vapor Snag, but what I put it in over was the Into the Royal. Because anything less than four... CMC, the repeal is better. And anything greater than that, okay, yeah, the Into the World is better, but I'm trying to support my early game as much as I can with these bounce effects. So for that, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. And I was thinking maybe I'll drop one Vapor Snag and put in one repeal based on that suggestion. You, you, you kind of got a little bit of a point there. Um, so uh, I was thinking about that. The other thing he uh, recommended was uh, playing sp some spell skites. I'm not. I'm definitely not opposed to that. I think they're more of a sideboard type of a card, but I do like the idea of spell skites. And you know, I wanted to look at his deck list right here really quick. Um, it's kind of interesting, like what he's got going on. It's creature list, which if you, I I've made a bunch of them, you know, a bunch of really nice creature list decks. I think creature list decks are great for the meta um, by putting in dead cards into their hand. Um, but what he's kind of going for here is like a, a one-sided... Uh, what do you call that? What do they used to call that deck? Heartbeat of Spring? He's kind of got like a one-sided Heartbeat of Spring going on here with the extra planar lens. Um... And I see what he's doing with the uh, with the snow covered islands. Like he, he does, uh, it's because nobody's going to have those. So it's it's completely one sided with the snow covered. Although I would think you would, since you got the snow covered in there anyway, why not just go ahead and throw in a couple scrying sheets? I mean, why not? 
um, give you a little card advantage engine in there. Um, but, I mean, there is some issues, you know, like, I, I, you see, he gives himself the extra planar lens into the Karn and the Blue Sun Zenith and the All is Dust. Um, I don't know if it's fast enough to, like, that's the thing, though, is, like, my problem with this list is, like, he's he wants that top-end inevitability, but nothing in it really accelerates him there fast enough. So while, you know, I think there's some things in there worth exploring, like the planar lens into some top-end inevitability, that he doesn't have enough to protect himself early game. The spell snares are not going to protect you. Um, that You know, death right shaman turn one hurts really bad. Um, I guess he's got repeals in there for those really early ones. So there's something, there's some stuff in here worth, worth looking at. Um... He, he does recommend getting rid of Delvers. I don't think so. Um, the reason I want to keep them is because, you know, it's not a tempo card per se. Because tempo decks use them, you know, obviously it gets off on, um, or sorceries and instants. Just because they use them doesn't mean he can't have applications in other places. So, you know, I, I'm not saying that I'm running a tempo deck or a mid-range. I don't know where to draw the line, okay? You could have an extremely long conversation of where a tempo deck ends and where a mid-range deck begins, but it, it's something in there played as a control deck, okay? So you can play a tempo deck in a controlling fashion. You can play a mid-range deck in a controlling fashion. You can do either of those things. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, it's like, it's like people think they, like, they want to put labels on your deck and they think that because they label your deck one thing or another, it's bad when you compare it to another deck with a similar label. Don't do that, okay? Don't compare a deck that has remand in it to every U, white, R tempo deck out there. You can't compare them. It's apples to oranges, all right? So, you know, you have to take each deck individually and, and evaluate what its game plan is. Like, what is it architect, you know, arc, like what's the architecture of the deck? What is it planning on doing? And does it execute that particular game plan? You know, and then you can sort of talk about, well, okay, here's one deck's game plan. Here's another deck's game plan. And you can talk about, you know, how well each deck executes its own game plan. And then you can say, well, this game plan is, you know, better or worse or has some pros and cons to it. And that's how you evaluate a deck. You don't just say, well, temp it's tempo. You should be playing red you know, or, or white in there or whatever, you know, it's control, you should be playing white, if it's tempo, you should be playing red, and this, these, these rules that only apply to one particular deck, it doesn't make those rules apply to every deck, you know, on the whole field, so that's just what I kind of wanted to say about that, I had one guy try and tell me that I was playing a fairy deck, <laughs> that this list was a f actually if he's like if you don't notice you're actually or in case you didn't know you're actually playing a fairy deck with just not very many fairies i'm like well not very many i've only got three of them in here and it's only because click is one of the best blue creatures ever printed it's certainly one of the best in modern um you know by that logic you've got i've got okay there's a human wizard there's a human wizard am i really playing wizards is this a wizard deck i mean you know i got eight of those versus three of the clicks you know more than twice as many you know 250 <laughs> percent but whatever you know some people they just want you to be a sheep you know get in line be a fairy deck player if you're playing blue because other people have done it and been successful don't think for yourself don't come up with new ideas don't try anything you know i'm i'm not saying you know this is the next great tier one deck or anything of the sort all i'm saying is i want to brew up a deck that's my own that i came up with by myself you know that's all. It doesn't have to win the next Grand Prix somewhere in order for it to be considered a good deck. So, you know, put that in your pipe and smoke it, fairy player. Um, anyway, so 
Um, there's keep those in from, but I, like, like bad business had originally posted. Those are the kinds of comments that I definitely want to keep, you know. And I, and like I said, I've taken some of them to heart, and maybe even we'll dump one of these vapor snags for their peel. I also want to put some spell skites in here. That was a good pickup, uh, you know, or a good heads up. I'll probably dump this. In fact, I'll just do it right now. I'm gonna dump this, and I'm gonna dump one of those. I will dump one vapor snag here. Let me get the repeal. Oh wait, before I get into the that, let me just show this card. I, this was suggested to me on one of my YouTube videos, and I, I forgot it was so expensive. It's freaking nine mana to overload this. But uh, if it wasn't nine mana, this would be a great little bouncer. Um. Anyways. Go back to, okay, repeal. Now we'll throw another one in here. Making it 60. Now let me go to spell skite. All right, so I dumped one of those. I guess I'll dump one more of those. And I will put in the spell skites. And I want to talk. I want to talk more about that that deck list that he's got because he's doing something that I personally haven't seen before, um, and I like. Um, he's going creatureless blue with a planeswalker finisher. That has that's you know I, I love that kind of a, an approach to modern. So I, I want to you know talk about it more. I think it's a it's so different from what I'm doing here that it would be like uh, you know I'd go back to the drawing board and start start up something else with the extra planar lens and stuff like that. So um, here's the new list and this is the list I'll be play testing in my next video. Um, but keep those posts coming. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, let's this might be in a video too because I have all these cards. Um, oh, I don't have all this dust. I don't have that. But wouldn't Oblivion Stone be better oh wait well i guess that it leaves your own um colorless permanence which would for this deck be pretty much only karn liberated oh the that's right the are the artifacts I forgot about those it could be tricky because you but you you know the the oblivion ring can put fake counters on things and you can sort of pick and choose what you want to keep I guess I would probably have to get some of these stupid things, which are extremely expensive now. Used to have a set of those. I sold them for something or other. Um, anyways, it, it's worth checking out. Um, but uh, keep keep these posts coming. I appreciate it. Keep less of the, you, you're playing fairies, just play fairies and be smart. Um, keep less of those, I guess. I don't, you know... I guess I don't mind it. Any activity is good activity, but, you know, I mean, come on. Bring your A-game to your posts. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty darn far from a fairy list with this. Um, and, and talk to me about, somebody talked to me about Tamiyo the Moon Sage. Um, it kind of worked for me in that last match, but I don't know. I, I want something a little bit more inevitable, like we were talking about, so... You know, what? what's a good blue finisher until Thassa comes? Because when Thassa comes, I'm pretty sure this is going to be gone. I'm going to use Thassa instead. And maybe bump up the Jace to four, because he's really been great for me in here. Um, so, yeah, t talk to me about a blue finisher. Um, somebody mentioned Guile. Somebody mentioned uh, Teferi. Um, Teferi's kind of cool, because once he lands, you can't, you know, you, you cast them at the end of their turn and they can't remove it, so you get to untap. So that could be interesting in a thing like this. So let me know what you guys think. All right, uh, appreciate it. Later. Thumbs up.